Hello. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between JavaScript and C or C++. And the reason that we're talking about this um, is, why talking about? Um, so CS151 at ISU currently is JavaScript, and CS201 and 202, the next courses in the major, are C, C++. Okay, so you'll be, if you're going on in the major or the minor, you'll be switching to C and C++. Here's a couple of um, differences. We'll come back to that in a second. So right now, I'm just going to um, look at an example. I'll put this in our class notes. And we'll make a C examples. And I'll start from uh, scratch with just hello world. And we'll do C. And we'll do a few examples like this and then um, run each one and discuss kind of the differences. Okay, so this up here is a hello world. And if we're in C, then there's two steps to running this. Remember in JavaScript, um, you would just say node hello.c or something like that, and it would run. In C, we're already seeing the first difference. I need to compile and then run. It's a two-step process. Compiling is using this uh, GCC command on the server. Okay, so now if I look, there are two files. Um, I have my hello.c, which is uh, 99 bytes of just characters, and I have my hi, which was created by the program. If I try to look at hi, it looks like nonsense because it's not text, it's machine code. So this is code that's directly ready to run on the CPU. Um, and I run it by doing dot slash hi. It says hello world, or if I do hi, depending on my, um, yeah, depending on my settings in my shell. Okay, so we don't need, with JavaScript you need node you do node and then the name of your program to run it, so you need to have the node program. With C, you first compile it, and then once it's compiled, so once I have this high program, I don't need the C compiler. I can just run it because it's ready to run. So that's one of the first differences. C is compiled. We compile it and then run. That's a two-step process. And JavaScript is called interpreted. That means that any computer that's going to run your JavaScript code has to have the JavaScript interpreter installed. In web browsers, it's um, JavaScript is included. So um, note um, many programs in your computer were written in C. For example, the operating system. compiled by the developers and then packaged to be put on your computer to run. So you don't have to have the C programming language on your computer. You just have to have this whatever it produced. Okay, so that's the first difference and that has implications for the strengths. Um, so C tends to be used when you have to have control of the machine itself. Um, so, for example, um, in the operating system, in embedded systems, um, controlling the hardware, so whatever the program is that controls the screen or the keyboard or whatever, um, that'll tend to be written in C because it's, it's lower level, and also for efficiency. Um, so the, reason, the fact that we compile this first before it runs when this compiling happens, the compiler that I'm using here is GCC, the GNU compiler. 
it has a chance to optimize the code. Now, there's nothing going on here, but if it was a complicated program, it can look at the code and optimize it to be fast. Okay, so that's the first difference and the, probably the most important. C is compiled, JavaScript is interpreted. So JavaScript um, will in general be slower than C. Um, let's look at, so if we look at our hello world here, um, let's put a little bit more in and I'll call it convert. So now we'll do one like the Fahrenheit to um, Celsius. So uh, I'll want it to be the usage will be something like convert uh, 32 and then it should output uh, 0, 0.0 Celsius. Okay, so for that we're going to need to check that there is an argument here. We can do that in C as well. I'll put this in and then say something about what's going on here. Okay. Um, so I'm already seeing another difference here. Um, in my two-step process, I had an error. This here showed that there was an error. So I will already see that's an error when I compile it. So I can have errors when I compile, and then I could have errors when I run. With JavaScript, it's all one process. You try to run it, and you may see some syntax errors, and you may see some other types of errors. Um, okay, so let me just what's the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius? So we have F. F minus 32 times 5 ninths. Let's see. Okay, if I run um, convert now, so this part right here, this if test looks very similar to in JavaScript. I have some condition that I want to check. If the condition true is true, then this runs. In JavaScript, um, we had process.exit. In C, we have just exit. In JavaScript, we had console.log. In C, we have um, printf is one option for printing. Let's see, just make sure it works. Um, so there's my convert usage and in C, so the, the arguments here, this was process.argv.length and process.argv. That's what we had in JavaScript. In C we have the main function so let me put this on the down here. So in in uh, JavaScript, uh, I start running from top of file in C. Start with main function. So when the the code actually starts running with the main function, it's a special name. All right. In JavaScript, we just start using these variables, process.argv. We don't have to, they're just going to be set up for us. In C, any variable has to be declared. So here we have this argc is declared, and we have to say what type it is. So in C, we say what type it is. This is an integer, and this is 
the way to declare an array of strings. This here was an array of strings in JavaScript. In C, this is how we declare it in the exact details. I'm not going to go into. All right, so that's another difference that we see with those. And then down here where we have our um, argv bracket one, that's like in um, JavaScript where we had argv bracket uh, two was the first parameter. But now in, um, in C, this is index in argv. This is the zero index, that's a string. This is the one index. In JavaScript, we had to say node first. So everything was pushed back by one. It would have been node convert.js 32. So this 32 would have been at bracket uh, two in argv. But with C, we just run the program. We don't have to have the C compiler once we're ready to run. Okay, so there we are at bracket one. If we want to save that into a variable called f, so in JavaScript, we would have said var f equals. So in JavaScript, we just say it's a variable. We don't have to just say what type. In C, we do. This is a double precision floating point number. Let's see if it works. Okay, we got the right answer there. 212 should be 100. And 98.6 should be around 37. Okay, so let's go back to the notes on the differences between C and JavaScript. Um, C is compiled, we already talked about that. Uh, strongly typed, this is a keyword. Um, so we have to declare variable types and once we declare the type, it doesn't change. In JavaScript, we could say, if we were in JavaScript, we could say now f equals hello or something like that and now it would be a string. In C, that's not that's not allowed. Um, once it's declared as a double precision floating point number, that's what it is. Let's see what else we have on our notes. Um, we haven't done anything with files here, but in C, um, the way you'll do it things will be by default um, synchronous um, so let's just let's just let's see let's look at an example we'll do um, so I'll give you an, another program here as an example so this is going to be counts file name .txt. And this is going to give some kind of some kind of counts. All right, I'll get rid of these comments. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a file. For reading. Let me just get this ready to go and run it and then see. Um, I'm just going to count how many characters there are. And there's probably errors here, but let's um, let's look at the debugging. So I'd, I'll say what happens here. So this is checking the um, command line arguments. There should be at least one. If there's not, we're going to exit. That's the same as in JavaScript. Here, this is... Um, 
open argv bracket one uh, file to read. Um, okay, so this would be something like hello.txt, and this is just how to open it to read. This would be um, this f open returns something that we can use to read the characters. This is what we do to read. I'll put it here. Read one character returns the special symbol EOF when file is done. So it reads one character at a time. So I have a loop here. As long as this fgetc doesn't return the special EOF symbol, I'll read one character and increase my count. Then at the end here, this is my print function. And this is how, um, so this is another difference. This um, formatted, uh, however you spell that, formatted printing, ch is a decimal number, decimal integer. Okay, so that's another difference. I don't think that I had on my um, list, but we'll, so let's try to compile this. Um, so what I'm expecting to happen is that if I type something like hello.txt, it'll try to open the file. If it can't open the file, it prints an error. If it can't open the file, then it repeatedly does this fgetc, and then it'll just tell me how many characters. Uh, let's do like this. And first we have to try to compile it. This is always the way at least it compiles, and if I don't give it any arguments, it should give me that usage statement. If I give it a name of a file that doesn't exist, there's the error in opening. If I give it a file that does exist, let's say my convert.c, there's a uh, mistake. Oh, I need to print the, not the character, I want to print the counts here. So anytime I change my, so in JavaScript, anytime you change the file, you need to make sure to save it before you run it again. With C, anytime you change the file, you have to save it, then compile, then run it again. That's another difference we can put on our list. So it says 562 characters. And if I look at my, that was convert.c, that agrees with the size of the file. So there's a simple program to calculate the size of the file. Let's go back to our list over here. Um, so printing is different. Um, use printf for formatted. Um, Output C does not automatically convert anything for you. Right in JavaScript, if I wanted to print here how many characters, I would have put um, in JavaScript. It would be something like um, console.log count plus characters. Right and it would automatically convert count to a string. In C, it doesn't do anything for us. It only does exactly what we tell it to do. And so this printf, this percent %d means the printf function is going to go and convert count to a string. Okay, so that's another difference. Um, let's go back up here, compile, then run. JavaScript is interpreted. Um, uh, let's see, I'll put here note for C, you must, uh, let's see, anytime you make change, you must save, then compile, then run. So that's, that's something. Uh, I could make this do something slightly more, um, no. So what I wanted to say here was about the file input output. So the way the file input output here is I call fgetc, it reads one character. So this function does not return either one of these until it reads a character from the file 
which means it's going to go and read off the hard disk. It has to wait for the hard disk or whatever um, solid state drive or wherever it's coming from. It has to wait for that to come back in. So the program will be sitting there waiting for it to come back in. That's called synchronous. Um, so we'll say note f get c is synchronous. Doesn't return uh, until done reading the character from the file. Okay. In JavaScript, things are by default asynchronous, and we haven't actually done any of that because we just haven't. But there's an example here where it shows in JavaScript reading asynchronously, that means not synchronous, versus synchronously. So this is an example where it would read the entire file and um, it uses some external package here uh, called fs. And the way it works is you say read the file. Um, this is the name of the file. This is the um, character encoding. And then when it's done reading the file, you tell it do this, which is just going to print the file. So that is, it'll, it'll go and start reading the file, and it'll run this when it's done, but then the execution will continue. So it would, it would keep continuing here in your program, and then this would happen sometime later whenever the file is done reading. That's asynchronous. There are, there are synchronous calls that you can do, so this would do a synchronous call, like, in C, like with my fgetc. So this will read the contents. This read file sync will not finish until it's done reading the file and puts it into contents. That reads the whole file. Over here I'm reading one character at a time. So we can do, in C, we can do synchronous or asynchronous. Either way, there's ways to do both. In JavaScript, there's ways to do both. But in C... When you're in 201 and 202, this will be the default that you have synchronous. You just read the character, and then when it's done, you, it's there. It's ready for you. In JavaScript, the default is asynchronous programming. And we'll see that when we look at actual JavaScript programs. Um, uh, let's see. We'll, we'll go. Let's go ahead and look at one of those. Let's see. We'll look at one here. This is a JavaScript program in a web page. And um, we'll look at this in the next video about how this actually works. But the way things work in uh, web pages is typically you, you have a web page and then there's some part of the web page that you say, oh, when they click the submit button, here's what you need to do. And in this one, there's this. So on when they submit, it's going to run the validate form function, which is up here. That is asynchronous programming. That when the page loads, you say, whenever they submit, do this. Okay, so that's different than what we've been doing with Node, where we do all the computation when they run the program. In node, we were doing node hello.js, and then it just runs straight through. In a web page, it loads the program, it loads the web page, and we have these functions that are set up to run when they do something. That's asynchronous programming or event based programming. We'll call that over here by default synchronous, while JavaScript is asynchronous. JavaScript in web pages is event-based. And we see that here with this example. And over here, this is an event-based program where we say whenever the file is done reading, that's an event, this is what's going to happen. This function is going to run. Um, okay, I think we got through a reasonable amounts and we'll call that it there. Um, if you're going to be in 201 or 202 then you want to start working on C programming. Here are some, there's lots of stuff you can read through. Um, pick one, try it out, and um, just kind of start reading. You can try things out. I'll just give a quick 
Uh, Hacker Rank is currently, as of summer 2007, a good place to go to practice your C programming. So you can sign up. Um, I already have an account here, so I'll just show you what it looks like when you get in there. Um, and you can start with algorithms, solve me first. So you can, tr these are all different problems and the way these are set up. It describes the, the problem and what you're supposed to do. Um, and you can do this in JavaScript if you want to practice your JavaScript, JavaScript node. We can also do it in C. So do it first in whatever language you know, just to get a feel for how it works. And then you can do it in C. And so they gave us a pretty strong hint here that this is what we're supposed to do. So I can run it and it runs on their test case and this is actually doing inputting from the um, from the terminal. I can copy paste this into my uh, terminal over here. This is uh, solve me first.c. So I can run this over here gcc let's see. and it's waiting for me to type two numbers. That's what this code does. That's the scanf function is going to read two numbers. And uh, what does this actually mean? Well, you have to go and look through some of those uh, references, start reading through one of those references, or look up um, C tutorial scanf example, you know, that type of stuff, and find something that you can understand. Um, once you get a basic lay of the land with C, then you can start doing programs here, and they'll tell you what's supposed to happen. So the program is going to um, expect two numbers with the user typing there, and then it's supposed to output the, the answer. Okay, and then we could go on to other, other examples that get slightly uh, more interesting. And some will be easier in JavaScript than C, and some of them will be easier in C than JavaScript. So your goal should be to get to a point where you could do some of these programs if you're in uh, 201 or 202. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, let's see, are there any other practice problems? Here are a couple other places where you can find uh, practice problems to work on. All right, good luck with C and C++.